So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna count all the plants that I have in my kitchen and that's what we're gonna title the video is I share meals with this many plants or I eat breakfast with this many plants or whatever something that is dealing with the kitchen. Like I mentioned this is a southwestern facing window. The other one is a north window. So starting on our most indirect bright light exposure. Um, I have a bunch of my Christmas and Easter cactus and two things that I have in water. This is a pink blooming Christmas cactus. These are the two that I got from Paris Plants when we did our plant swap slash collab. They're looking awesome. <clears throat> I was actually recently asked because there's no drainage, is that an issue? With something this small, with roots this tiny, I really don't water it very often and when I do it's not enough that the moisture is going to rot at the bottom because there's, you know, very little roots to expose it to and I don't give it a lot of water to begin with. It does need to be dusted quite a bit. In the back here is actually a peace lily. I have it water propagating probably for like, I don't know, probably been in here a year, TBH. This came off of my peace lilies when I separated them last summer. So this has been in here a long time and I kind of just keep it in there in case I want to pop it in my beta fish tank. This is an Easter cactus. I'm pretty sure it blooms red. It might be white though. I don't know, but I guess I'll find out closer to Easter. <laughs> it's still putting out little buds at the top and down here. So everything is still growing, um, even though it's not blooming. This is my first Christmas cactus that I got, and I'm pretty sure this one is white. And then in the back here, I have a prayer plant cutting, also propagating in water. That came off of my plant. I have my southwest exposed window. So all of these plants get bright, bright indirect light. And I have them on this plant stand that you guys may have seen me build. And I think we're going to just start from the left go across per row and then um, I'll show you everything. This is mostly where all the plants in this room stay. Even though it's a low light loving plant, it lost a lot of its red foliage. Um, I recently moved it into this macrame and put it closer to the window. It's off to the side so it doesn't get like a ton of exposure to light but it's a red aglonemia. It needs more light than it was getting for sure. Um, at the top here, this is my croton plant. I'll take that down and show you guys. It doesn't have a lot of the crazy, you know, spotting that you would see on a croton. Probably because I have it in my home. But it did actually flower. If I could find a picture, I'll show you guys what it looks like. This is one of the plants I want to move outside. Um, but I wanted to film this before. I took any plants outside so you could see what was inside beforehand. So this is a jade and pearl pothos. It did lose a lot of its white um, variegation. There is some still here, but I did the mistake of putting it out of any kind of lighting. It was just completely in super indirect lighting, not even indirect bright, just indirect. And it started to green up because it needed more chlorophyll to keep the plant alive and so it um, lessened its variegation but some of that's starting to come back. This is one of the plants that I was given during my goodbye ban. I cannot think of the name of it right now but it's an epiphyllum of some sort. Here is my fire sticks. This is also going to go outside. I can hopefully get some of the red and yellow tips. It is still producing little uh, leaves though. Also up here I have a rainbow peperomia. It's a little sad. It's always looked like that. It doesn't go out. They just droop down. And um, this does get pretty neglected but it's pretty hardy I must say. I'm not so. This is a cut back recently Fatona. I have actually a bunch of the cuttings in there in water, um, water propping some roots so I can just fill this back in. 
I don't like this plant. I actually kind of thought about letting it die a few times. The spider plant that I was given filled in really nice. Especially this one that I thought was a curling variety. It's not. It's just variegated, which is cool. This is my purple trade scantia. I have it in this little owl planter. This used to live in my bathroom, but we moved it out here in the sun, and it's pretty cool. It's got this really nice purple back, and the leaves do get really shiny and iridescent, and they all kind of face towards the sun. This plant is intense. It'll grow even if you cut it and it starts to die. It'll still keep growing somehow. Hey, look at this part. I don't even know when it clipped off, but it basically like, I don't know, committed plant suicide. And all it did was start losing some of its coloring, but the tip still looks perfect. So if I plop this in water, it'll be fine. So this was a plant that I got right before my June buy ban. It is a neon pothos and it is super super bright green like chartreusey bright neon green like its name suggests and it's putting off some pretty good growth i actually already took a cutting from it and it's in water because i wanted one in my bathroom super easy to propagate this is my cottonanthe it's actually in bloom which is so cool that you guys get to catch um, these dainty little flowers I love them so much. This plant is, um, I don't know, it's kind of succulenty, kind of, I don't know. It's not super difficult to take care of, but I think if there was some neglect, it would be. Obviously, duh. But, they're so cute. I keep this in a south facing window, but that doesn't seem to affect like what side the blooms are coming on because this is the opposite side that does never face the window. I just think it's its growing season. Um, it didn't even reach the bottom of the pot when I first got it and now as you guys can see it's trailing down me arm. Me arm! This is my Hoya, which is also quite large. Um, in comparison, I would say. Some of it is a little dry. Let's see if you could see that. Generally, I like to take this into my shower and hose it off, kind of like mimicking a natural shower. And I do that about once a week, usually Sundays, like my day to do all the hanging baskets. Um, and this past Sunday, it just got two dumps of water from a cup, so that's probably not enough for that guy. Up here is a pothos. I couldn't get it down because it's attached up there, but um, this is one of the oldest plants that we actually have, and believe it or not, it is not mine. It's my husband's, but it is currently under my care, and it's starting to get some of its variegation back. This was another plant that was paired too far away from light for a long time, but it is still pretty hardy. Over here is the um, corner area. This is an amaryllis, which I'm considering putting outside. That's from Christmas. It never wilted completely. Um, here's one of the monsteras that I ended up transplanting. Looks a little droopy right now, but it is putting off new leaves. This is a graptopetalum. Superb. In front of all of this, I have a cutting from one of the pink princess philodendron. This is the most recent new leaf I have, and it's getting to be very green like the other. And there is another one shooting out, so that's exciting. I do have an Echeveria flower that actually put off babies at the ends of its flower buds of other succulents. I keep that in water. These are probably propagations I'll never do anything with and I'll end up, you know, throwing them out unless they turn out heads. This came attached to one of my plants from Lowe's. <laughs> totally accidental. Above it here, I have a couple of air plants. For everyone that thinks I still kill them, here you go. These are all from Drunken Gnome in my unboxing. There's another one, and this 
I don't know what this is. Moses Cradle or something. Cacti. And in here, this is a rhizome of a begonia that recently died or is dying, I'm not sure. A cutting from my jade and pearl pothos. Some drape, jade casula in the back. And this is a peperomia that had babies somewhere. Oh, it's still in there. Let me see. So as you can see, there's one right here, and there's a new one in the back there. And then also this is my mini palette. So some of them did die, some of them are still alive, but a lot of the ones that I pulled were from my garden outside, so they probably just preferred to be outside. I'm going to pan across this one because it will be really hard to touch these things. This is a grow sign that we painted from Target's Dollar Spot. This is, I believe, a Euphorbia Milii or a Crown of Thorns. It's currently not in bloom, but it does have all of its foliage um, for the summertime. That kind of goes away come winter. Uh, let's go back here. This is a moon cactus grafted onto, I believe, a dragon fruit cactus. A curly jade variety that's from Succulent Studios. I could probably use a little bit more water, actually. Um, in the back there, this white one here, the white bumpy looking one, that's a Domino's cactus. And in the Campbell's can, Andy Warhol style is just a very, um, I believe that's a zebra warthia. I could be wrong. That's an oxalis in the back, the purple clothes shamrock. This is the peperomia right here that those cuttings are from. Back here is a Ming thing cactus. Let me see if I can get closer to that. Uh, it's really bumpy. I don't like to touch him, but it grows so slow. I'm wondering if it would do better outside. Here's another one. We'll back up a little. Below that, I have the string of tears putting off some new babies there and behind it is the donkey tail or burrow sedum two of them doing really good in front of that is some rose quartz and some propagating babies below that same with in this one Nothing really formal. I haven't cleaned this area in a little while here, but maybe we'll do that together before I'm, you know. The goal here is to take some plants outside and let them have some summer sun and uh, hopefully get some more nutrients and things. This, I believe, is a white uh, African violet. I haven't seen it bloom in a long time. This is also another African violet. This one's purple. This was a baby from the next one I'm going to show you. This one, actually I think this one is um, it was pink and white. If I could find photos of them when they're in bloom, I will pop them up on the screen. These are the jade tree clippings that I got from Pears Plants in a planter that I got from Sarah in that swap. They look a little dry. I'm pretty bad at keeping up with this sort of thing in the summertime. Um, definitely trying to establish a better watering schedule but this kind of stuff happens and I don't want everybody to think that it's like all picture perfect all the time. Right, this is one of like one that I don't like to mess with too much that's why I'm not bringing it over but this is the only string of pearls I've ever seen IRL 
and it's somehow still alive and it's somehow growing babies so I'm really proud of that it's you know grouped together with some sort of I believe Haworthia that could be an aloe Ray if you're watching let me know I'm pretty sure you have one of these guys this is a red rex begonia it did bloom in springtime which was pretty cool it's still growing when it puts off new leaves they kind of start out like this silvery color and then they right there there's one got it silver and then it matures out to this nice red i don't know how i'm keeping it alive it's not in a pot that has drainage but it does have good soil in it there's a baby underneath there coming up, um, which is strange because, you know, you would think certain things work for one style of begonia, but don't work at all for the other. Move this over here. This was a project we did together, if you guys remember, using dollar store items. So not everything made it because I believe that we should have put drainage holes in this guy, so... We have a very sad display over here of what used to be a couple of Echeverias. They're all gone and dead now. <laughs> um, we do still have the Golem in both areas and a couple of this little, it was the string of buttons or baby necklace, something like that. Um, I had two clumps of it, but one died, but these guys are fat. Look at them, thick boys, there's the dead ones. But these ones, awesome. So, needless to say, we have some planting projects to handle together. This is a planter I got from Walmart. I think it was a buck. This thing was so much cuter when I got it, and then it had like a ton of babies all around the edge and grew like a cone head. So, it is what it is. I mean, the flowers are really pretty when it comes out, so it actually kind of, like, mimics this a little bit, so. It's ugly, but I like it. These are just two jade cressulas and an aloe in the center, which I'm going to break this whole planter up soon. Use it for something else, I think, in the bathroom. And these... I actually don't know what those are. If you guys do, let me know. I've had them a couple of times, and they always die because I underwater. This is my bear paws. Surprisingly, putting off new babies on the bottom. However, this side died. I don't know. It's so strange. Like I said, you can, you know, expect one to thrive and then not the other. Maybe this one choked the other out. I don't know. But this one did put on a lot of growth. Let's see, what else do we have here on this shelf, the top shelf? Oh, we're getting to it. This I'm going to take down and show you guys. Let's do that. Alright, so this is a pretty good majority of all of the little succulents and cacti that I had in like single pots. Some of them came from Succulent Studios when I had their subscription box. Some of them came from just cuttings that I bought or they propagated themselves, um, but I really liked this pot that I got in the swap with Sarah. I just combined a couple of things, so in the back I have this little tiny Haworthia that was in a Little Plants Club box. I have some sort of, I, I don't know, button something maybe? This is a tiger jaw aloe, some sort of echeveria, which is kind of branching right here, if you guys could see that. It, like, sucked off two shoots. Um, one's back by this little van, which came from Dollar General. This little jade tree, or what is this, a portulacaria, if that's what this is, um, is still alive, but it's definitely been fuller. I'll probably end up taking this out towards the end of summer, and whatever survived, survived. Um, this is a Velvety, can't remember the name of it, that was also from a Succulent Studios box, but I don't have optimum quality, like, lighting that I want to hook up for succulents as of right now, because it drains a lot of energy to run the T5 lights that I have for growing uh, vegetables and stuff, so I haven't made that commitment yet on if I'm going to give indoor plants them. 
Here's another one of those plants. I don't remember. And then there was another variegated one here, but that died. I'll just rip. <laughs> another piece of golem jade. Some sort of powdery blue echeveria. I can't remember what this is. Mm, starts with a P. A really prickly guy in the back. The TBH, that's probably my favorite cactus I own. And then there was another echeveria over here, but that's left to like this one old petal and one new one. So um, maybe not the best combo for all of these things, even though there was drainage. I either probably either underwatered it or didn't get to it um, in a sufficient lighting. But I still thought it was cute, especially when it was first done answer um, I was given from a friend it's like when people know that you're into plants and they want to get rid of certain things they just hit you up and I love it um, here's a pretty side of the jade golem actually I'm gonna turn that inward so the rest of this can go that way to the Sun but I thought you guys would appreciate the planter it's in all right that was everything on the second layer which this needs to be done. If you guys have suggestions on terrarium plants, this doesn't hold moisture as well as I thought it would, but maybe plants that thrive better or are more prone to like infection can be kind of quarantined in here. If you have suggestions, let me know. I'd love to redo that. Oh, and under here, I do have a bunch of trade scantia that I probably didn't show you. Anything that falls off, I just plop it in there. So let's move down to the third layer, which, oh, you know what? We showed you everything on this third layer here already. This was the untouchable layer. I do have um, seed pods here from my petunias, um, black and white. So some of them are ready already. And then you just squeeze them into like a Ziploc bag and you would save the seeds for next year and I'm gonna winter sow those instead of having to buy them but you guys can kind of see the black specks those are the seeds this is um, a salt crystal below this is like the thing no one talks about and that isn't very pretty but this is a Kalanchoe plant that I actually just kind of let die I uh, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't like how it was shooting out new legs and just it looked terrible. So I unfortunately let that die. Don't pay attention to that if you uh, are bothered by that sort of thing. <laughs> and in the back here we have my oxalis. This is the green one. As you can see it came back beautifully since my dormancy suggestion video which when I say dormancy guys I just mean the plants need a break for some rejuvenation other plants freaking dormancy times vary so it's flowering it's looking happy I'm not as diligent as turning it and maintaining it in the summertime but I feel like being that it's directly like that's the window and this is the cast down, it kind of almost acts like an underplanted ground cover like it usually is anyway. And I don't have as much problem with stretching except for this one, which is entering a dormancy period, wouldn't you know? Because look at those babies coming up. But in the meantime, we do have uh, longer guys, but they still look really healthy and happy and uh, probably give them some fertilizer and by winter time they'll be going. Below this, however, I don't know if it's just because it is the season that it is, my prayer plant used to be massive. Like you saw the other half of it, it's in water, but this half is just looking so sad. It was in a taller pot. I recently transplanted it hoping it'll bring it back. If it doesn't, it's no big deal, but I'll probably try and get some tubes from it and then replant them. And then the rest of this is just either pots that I moved things out of for those smaller succulent arrangements. Like this was in my son's room holding three. We ended up putting them in separate pots, so it's just 
you know, tags and messes, tools, um, fertilizer in the back, seeds that desperately need to be organized and gone through. <clears throat> I have a pretty good seed collection going on recently, so if that's something you guys want to see, let me know and I would gladly film a video about it. I know a lot of my viewers, especially um, since I did a poll over on my Instagram, if you guys want to follow me there, it's the same name as it is here. It's Sam Green Sly Fox. I do a lot of Instagram stories and polls and opportunities for you guys to get to know me and ask me some more personal questions. But it seems like a lot of you really enjoy the house plants versus gardening, but it's something that I function on a seasonal calendar and I really embrace that. So when I have the opportunity to grow something and be outside and experience outdoor plants. Look at this cat. I do. Oh, he looks so cute. Oh, PC. PC buddy. <laughs> and directly below that on the bottom shelf, which I would obviously like to probably combine these shelves and have this one hold plants and then have just this be supplies. We have some empty pots some seasonal stuff like this is from Easter holds terracotta I like to make money trees for the kids and just certain things like that um, future supply things pumpkin patch I gotta paint this we're gonna do a little crafty video um, some bigger what are these a couple two gallon pots and over here somehow my dirt has managed to end up in a box instead of on the shelf so i have to do some cleaning so the window in front of me directly right now is like our northern exposure window which i keep a lot for water propagation and a lot of my ivy seem to really do well over here so that's where i have those things and i'll show you now right here i have a variegated hardy ivy i actually kind of want to take this outside and harden it and um, have it grow outside maybe for some winter interest I remember seeing these in New York City in pots um, in like November and December and they did really well. Next to that, you know, that water, is another freaking trade scantia. Um, thinking about selling them or just giving them away randomly every couple of videos to subscribers. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. In my favorite all-time spice jar is a neon pothos cutting that I want to eventually get into my bathroom. Some more trade scantia. This one's the purple variety. This, do you guys see that spider? I'm gonna leave her in there. That's a violet. And that's another purple one. Some gross dried flowers. An avocado that I am desperately trying to root with no success. A I believe this is a purple ghost pepper, I'm not sure, and another piece of trade scantia going up. <clears throat> and on the side we have my sweetheart ivy, which is pretty dark at the moment. And over in the corner where I had my fish tank, which is currently empty, I have to clean it out and probably get a new fish, but I have this philodendron um, that we have sitting in some of the water so it doesn't die but this is just a regular green that I know of philodendron. Over here I do have this fake cactus. I'm cool with fake cacti. This came from Target. Um, it's marked as $9.99 but I'm pretty positive I got it for like a dollar ninety nine. I that it's green and white and it just kind of pops in the corner here and these are for tomatoes. Any questions, please leave them in a comment below. Thank you as always for spending some time with me in my house and getting to see some of my plants, especially ones that you may have seen in hauls, how they're doing now. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.